I see a man. I see a man. मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है Let's say, for example, if you were surprised, right? You say like, I see a man. मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है Okay, interesting. So the whole thing kind of gets lifted up, right? Yeah. Um, or what if there's like a misunderstanding? Like you think I I said uh, I hear a man, but I say no, 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 no. I see a man. Mac is uh. So hold on. <laughs> It's hard to translate even into my own language. Okay. So, मैं किसी को सुन सकता हूँ. नहीं, मैं किसी को देख सकता हूँ. Okay. So it sounds like there's maybe a bit of a different sentence there, actually. Uh, obviously, if somebody is watching this and they speak Hindi, they probably understand enough English that they're not surprised by that. <laughs> But yeah. for people who speak Hindi or for people who just you know speak whatever language, um, this is a good point that sometimes the um, obviously the translation. Isn't always going to be word for word, but sometimes depending on what you're emphasizing, yeah. a particular language might actually change the words. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay, so that's something very important.、Um, so I did not use man like man goes for like admi. So、uh -huh. I did not use man in this sentence when I said it in Hindi. So I just I just said koi as in like it's a I guess it's a pronoun. So I use、okay. that instead of man. Yeah. Okay. Because、okay. if I say it. To my friend, like I won't say that. मुझे एक आदमी की आवाज सुनाई पड़ रही है. नहीं नहीं मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है. So that's maybe more appropriate, I guess. Okay. नहीं मुझे एक आदमी की आवाज नहीं मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है. No no no. मुझे एक आदमी की आवाज सुनाई पड़ रही है. Something like this. Okay. So and now I'm getting what you're trying to get into. So maybe I can yeah maybe in the next few sentences I can okay I can tell you what it is yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm also trying to pick up on little things like that because I don't know how these other languages work, right?、Um, yeah. But I know strange things can happen, and so English learners need to be aware that in English, they're not necessarily、mm -hmm. going to change the sentence itself. They might just change the intonation on a particular word, right? Okay.、Um, which is how Spanish works. That's how German works, as far as I know. But apparently in Hindi,、mm -hmm. you know, you might actually change the words. So I don't see it. I don't see it. मुझे नहीं दिख रहा मुझे नहीं दिख रहा मुझे नहीं दिख रहा Now, so far, we these first two sentences are just statements. So in English, we follow at the end, right?、Um, mm -hmm. And I want to take a second here to try to hone in on the tone, because or the not the tone, the the basic rhythm, because that's why we're here mostly, right? Let's slow it down. I want you to say that first sentence and the second sentence. Again,、um, mm -hmm. just one after the other. मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है. This is like a basic. If I'm speaking with, like a in a very neutral way, because if I speak with my friend, then I'll be like, मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है. Like it would be a bit fast、mm -hmm. and like flat. So there's no like ups and downs or something、okay. like that. So it only happens when we are saying, like if I am shocked or like. If I am using some negative sentence, then we have this kind of like a rhythm.、Okay. But if I just yeah speak with the man, like speak with my friend, and I see मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है, so、mm -hmm. so I'll slow it down and I'll say it again, okay? मुझे एक आदमी दिख रहा है. I don't see it. मुझे नहीं दिख रहा. मुझे नहीं दिख रहा. It's kind of like because I'm I'm trying to listen to the length and the stress. मुझे नहीं दिख रहा. I don't see. मुझे नहीं दिख रहा. Yeah, so we know Hindi is syllable timed,、um, which is helping to guide my、know. ears.、Um, well, I, I know that I looked it up. <laughs>、um, <laughs> so English is stress timed, Hindi is syllable timed.、Um, so the rhythm should. I mean, obviously the the exact stress and intonation is going to follow different rules, but、um, the the underlying basic rhythm should match、uh, languages like Spanish.、Um, And I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. So, if you say、um, uh, "I don't see it," right? That would be like、um, "no lo veo," "no lo veo," right?、Um, and my my Spanish、uh, rhythm is not perfect. Mujhe nahi dikha. Yeah, right. So, so the way you're saying it now, obviously the sounds are different, but you're saying like,、uh, say it again for the for number two. Mujhe nahi dikha. Say it again. Mujhe nahi dikha. Mujhe nahi dikha. Okay, yeah, I wasn't even picking up one of the syllables. Uh, 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 u
मुझे 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 नहीं नहीं न देख देख रहा रहा यस यार मुझे नहीं दिख रहा कैन आई टाइप इट व्हाई एम आई पिकिंग अप एन एन इन देयर दैट्स वियर्ड मुझे नहीं दिख रहा ओके दैट्स व्हाट्स हैपनिंग या uh it's like the different sounds like cha nahi dik kha kha and raha ha so mujhe nahi dikh raha mujhe nahi dikh raha yeah you got it yes yes <laughs> that's my superpower it probably wasn't 100% but um when i trying to do syllable timed um it's i feel i have to really force the length to sort of flatten out and so it's it's a bit unnatural for me because if i were to say this um using just english rhythm i would say mm-hmm. like i mean i don't i'm not familiar enough to really say for sure but i would probably want to say it something like um mujhe nahi dikh raha you know or something like mujhe nahi dikh raha or something like that i don't know like <laughs> depends on what word mujhe nahi dikh raha <laughs> Um, yeah it's it's quite flat i mean i don't see i don't hear any kind of like mujhe nahi dikh raha it's not like that but it's like mujhe nahi dikh raha it's it's a normal statement i can't see it mujhe nahi dikh raha it's like the same thing i see a man using google translator mm-hmm. then it says mujhe ek aadmi dikhai deta hai that's also okay but yeah it, it would mean i see a man on a regular basis so uh, okay. that's what it means like yeah Yeah. So yeah. like I see a man I mean you see him on a regular basis like something like that so mujhe ek aadmi dikhai deta hai that is also okay so I see a man mujhe ek aadmi dikhai deta hai okay and then I don't see it let me type that <clears throat> I don't see it now it has a completely different meaning main ise nahi dekhta so that doesn't make sense I don't see it like if you're trying to see something and you don't see it uh-huh. mujhe nahi dikh raha hai mujhe nahi dikh raha same okay. um yeah depending on the context on um, these sentences even in english they yeah. they could have slightly different meanings like if i say i see a man it could imply regularly but without a context it just sounds like i physically yeah. see a man right It's now it's weird and, yeah so if somebody uh, yeah listens to me and probably they, they will end up saying it doesn't mean the same thing so now you know what they're trying to say just yeah. just for the future yeah exactly yeah so um now that that's a bit more about like like grammar and context um which i they're all connected mm-hmm. but um mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about too much about all those possible uh permutations and variations but so it seems on a basic level for a statement um i'm hearing hindi kind of like falls at the end you know it kind of it, it just mm-hmm. lays flat mujhe nahi dikhta yeah so that's pretty much the same indicates a basic statement um but we'd have that syllable time where it's kind of everything's just kind of equal length um where english right i see a man i see him as like da 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 mm-hmm. not if if you say like i see a man i see a man like that's more syllable time and we I don't want to see that. a man exactly I right yeah, man. Like, i see a man yeah but mujhe ek aadmi dikh raha hai it's like flat i don't hear any kind of like rhythm or something but yeah it's it's pretty flat so that's why we also call it like khadi boli it's we call it like khadi as in like flat uh-huh. like not very ups there's there is not a lot of up and down mm-hmm. i don't i don't think so there's a lot of or maybe i don't hear it because it's my yeah. native language so maybe i don't hear it it could be yeah yeah cuz me listening to you um this which this could be being filtered through my native language rhythm but Um yeah. I'm hearing like if I really pay attention I can hear sort of that equal length if I'm not paying attention for that um mm-hmm. it sounds kind of like English rhythm to me it's like da 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 instead of like da 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 it's like da 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 right um, a little bit maybe yeah yeah so um now there is an important point that I want to mention here that I haven't mentioned in any of the previous interviews um which is that uh there is debate in linguistics mm-hmm. about this idea that some languages are syllable time some languages are stress time um mm-hmm. and a lot of researchers seem to be thinking now that um 
a particular language might have a tendency to be more syllable timed and another language might have a tendency to be more stress timed. But in reality, uh, depending on the context and the speaker and how they're feeling and all these different variables, there are times when a stress time language might be spoken, like a sentence might come out a little flatter and more even, more syllable timed um, yeah. and vice versa. So it's not mm -hmm. necessarily so like polar opposite. And if you're sort of in between, and like if you know you mm -hmm. speak a language that maybe it's not so far to one side or the other um mm -hmm. know that you might be able to pick up on that and um that english is primarily stress time you know we're, we're definitely on that side of it for the most part yeah do you see her do you see her kya tumhe wo dikh rahi hai kya tumhe wo dikh rahi hai kya tumhe wo dikh rahi hai but for somebody who speaks Hindi who might be watching this or another language that maybe works kind of similarly, um, it seems important to point out that if you're paying attention to your own language and you slow it down and yeah. you notice, hey, there's actually like, mm -hmm. it seems like there's more sounds there or, you know, certain sounds aren't, aren't disappearing. And then you go and you listen to English, right? Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be the same thing in the same places or work exactly the same way, yeah. but know that English does something very similar. So you have to be aware of that as well. English isn't some perfectly... This is one reason why I say mm -hmm. that enunciation is a tool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, we don't speak English like, I see a man. I don't see it. Do you see her? Yeah. Right? And that's yeah. how a lot of English learners seem to have the perception of how English is supposed to be spoken, but it's very mechanical and robotic. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Are you sure? Are you sure? क्या आपको यकीन है क्या आपको यकीन है क्या आपको यकीन है What do you see? What do you see? आप क्या देखते हैं आप क्या देखते हैं आप क्या देखते हैं आप क्या देखते हैं Now I'm noticing you kind of falling at the end there as well. At least mm -hmm. according to my ears. Yeah, uh, maybe. आप क्या देखते हैं So Yeah, it is. Okay, so it probably works similarly. Uh, so if I were to translate this sentence, like what do you see if I, mm -hmm. if I don't translate it on Google, then what do you see? Tumhe kya dikh raha hai? Yeah, aapko. Aapko is like respectful or tumhe is like if you're talking to your friend, so it's tumhe. Right. But aapko is like if you're talking to somebody with respect, then we use aap. Mm -hmm. So, aapko kya dikh raha hai? Aapko kya dikh raha hai? Aapko kya dikh raha hai? Yeah, that has a bit of a different feeling to it. Now, you mentioned like, okay, if because if, according to Google Translate, it was giving you like a like a respectful or translation or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And the way you were saying that with the, like the how the, the intonation was was going, um, it sounded a bit different. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a feature of Hindi? Like if you're if you're speaking really respectfully to somebody? Um, that... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it's, there's a big difference. So that is more a feature of intonation, uh, more mm -hmm. up at like sort of a higher level, which we're looking at sentences, but we're really focused on what's that basic rhythm, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it is important to note things like that for sure. Because we're focused on the basic rhythm, I'm not going to really worry too much about that. But as a note, right, if you're a Hindi speaker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you say, what do you see? But you're trying to speak respectfully you might adopt that sort of hindi intonation right yes um and you don't necessarily want to do that in english because in it, like that's not even a feature like i mean obviously we have ways that we can use tone that might sound rude you know or that might sound sort of like makes it sound a little bit lighter in a way mm -hmm. but it's not so much like oh to show respect you know, or, or anything yeah. like that. It's... So I think emotions, like if you, like your emotions, like if you're angry, then you will say it like differently. Are you sure? Like this, uh -huh. right? So your intonation may vary. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if it's very neutral and you're just saying a sentence, then it would be completely different. If you're happy, are you sure? So it may be different. So emotion may also, like emotion also plays a big factor, I guess, right? It's a big uh, factor in... Yeah. It plays a big role in changing the intonation uh, of what you're saying. Yes. And that brings me to another very important point here. 
because it's so since, since the rhythm especially between syllable and stress time can be so hard to hear at first right you mm -hmm. probably won't even notice that right say you're just a random english learner um, maybe you heard english is stress time or this or that or whatever you know some basic things but you you haven't trained your ears right and you think you're hearing it but you're really not and then you say okay well i'm much more interested in intonation and you know this this sort of higher level stuff and oh if i'm sounding angry how do i do this or you know blah 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 whatever um, and those are all very important things that you need to know that might be different between languages but it sort of helps to further hide that basic underlying rhythm and so even mm -hmm. if you get the intonation really really well if you're using a, a really syllable timed pattern of rhythm in english it doesn't matter if you have the right intonation because it's still going to sound not natural, right? Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. You're a student, right? You're a student, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, up, up. Uh, you tensing, you're tensing your muscles. Ah, ah. Uh, like you're eating something. Ah, 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 ah. Up, up, up. Up. Ek, ek. That's so good. Chatr. Chat. No. Cha. Cha. Yeah, I'm, I'm having Chatr. trouble finding a vowel. Tra. 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 Yeah, that's okay. Not. Tra. Chatra. Chatra. He. He. Na. Na. Yeah. I, I see, even for me, where I have lots of experience playing with sounds and looking at different languages, mm. um, and I, I do think I have a little bit of a talent for this, um, but even then, mm -hmm. like, I can pick it up, you know, relatively quickly, but I can't, I still can't handle the rhythm and the sounds and everything at once to get it 100% mm -hmm. on the first try. Before you're like 14, 14 no. years old, then you can probably pick up the accent and you can pick oh, up yeah. the way the people speak. But after 14, once you're like 16, 18 or older, then you would not be able to like copy the exact accent. You may not be able to speak yeah. like those who are actually living there. That's absolutely so, nonsense. I mean, in general, in general. Well, yeah, no, I, I mean in general as well. I, the the standard perspective is that there might be some people after a certain age who can master it, but most people can't. Mm -hmm. My perspective is the opposite. My perspective is that most people can, but some people might not be able to. Mm -hmm. One thing that needs to be very clearly understood by all learners of all languages um, is that you can't make the same exact judgments of say adults or of kids mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on kids or adults, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you can't necessarily judge them. Now, um, there are some things that are very similar, like potentially you can absorb the grammar of a language, even as an adult, given the right exposure mm -hmm. and time, right? It's a very slow way. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and if you, but if you set up the right conditions, like if you move to a country that speaks the language, you only listen to that and you really pay attention to what's going on around you you can potentially just absorb mm -hmm. the grammar. Um, but that's not the best way as yep. an adult because you have logic, you have consciousness, right? And the benefit, is, especially for pronunciation, the benefit that uh, children have, the brain is still forming, right? Um, and yeah. the human brain is designed to pick up language of some sort, right? Whether that's sign language or whatever. But um, mm -hmm. once you reach a certain age, right? The, the people who have so-called talent in language like me, my theory, which I guess somebody would have to put me through a machine to, to see, but my theory is that the people who are naturally talented at the pronunciation of, a, of, of learning languages, um, the brain didn't prune all the connections that the average person's brain does uh, for, for perceiving sounds and stuff. Um, and so okay. they still, sort of still have some of those connections that they had as a baby. But you can still develop the same pathways and connections through direct practice and conscious focus. You know, it's going to maybe take a little more time, but it's perfectly possible for the average person. Um, but that's the whole thing. Where children can absorb it, adults have the mm -hmm. benefit 
of being able to consciously focus their attention and direct their their perception and use things like minimal pairs to actually develop the things where children don't have to do that that's the, one of the good things about being mm -hmm. a child but it it doesn't mean that the pathway is closed it just means that you can't use the same method that children did just trying to absorb the pronunciation it's not going to work right um, oh, yeah and so Yes, vowel charts are approximate. They're not perfect tools, right? But that's why you have to focus on feeling your tongue, focus on hearing the difference between sounds, focus, and you know, consciously direct your attention to these things. Um, and given the time, given the right techniques, and uh, given enough consistency, right? Enough intensity, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the water has to boil in the pot, right? You need enough heat to boil yeah. the water. I believe that the average person if they want, it is a lot of work, but the average person, if they put in that work and they really want it, they can mm -hmm. sound exactly like a native or extremely, extremely close to where it's it's hard to notice. Do it. Do it. Isse karo. Isse karo. Now, if uh, you're trying to be respectful, isse karein. Isse karein. Okay. Isse karein. Isse karo. Isse karein. Okay, so I don't know if it's because of the the change in vowel that uh, that I'm I'm noticing, but it seems to me like the one that's more more polite. It mm -hmm. kind of maybe doesn't punch up quite as much. It, it's it's like mm -hmm. sort of stays down. Like, uh, what would you say? Like, um, yeah, like is it cutting? exactly right? Is it cutting? We're potentially seeing a another little tiny detail of like you know politeness or respect um, that. Yeah, it might change the sound, but it also is changing a little bit of that rhythm or that intonation. Now, the thing about a command in English, it's called the command form, right? The imperative form. But it, it that doesn't necessarily mean like we usually we, we have, we're supposed to put a, an exclamation point at the end of a command, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like you're you're like like grammatically you're commanding somebody. But it, it's not necessarily super mm. f like forceful, right? Like some people think of commands as like, wow. oh, well, that's too direct. You know, um, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily how English works. Like if I just say yeah. like, oh, um, like, uh, uh, just do it now. Right. Like you say, hello, hey, when do you want this done? I say, oh, just do it now. It's, it's a girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not like forcefully saying like, hey, you need to do this like right now. And I'm imposing myself on you or something like that. It's just <laughs> like you asked me. Okay. I said, oh, well, now, you know, just, and the age doesn't matter in English. It really doesn't. Um, yeah, it, it might oh, matter yeah. the the possible. He is. Uh huh. He. It could be uh, a kid or uh -huh. a ninety year old guy. He is yeah. he, right? Uh -huh. Like in, yeah. I mean, but <laughs> in in Hindi, uh, yeah, there's a difference, a slight yeah. difference. Yeah, um, the age and politeness might sort of affect what types of variation and intonation you could use and not sound rude. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wo ascharjanak hai. Wo ascharjanak hai. Wo ascharjanak hai. Yeah. Wo ascharjanak hai. Interesting. Definitely some interesting things going on there. Um are does Hindi use reductions? Do you know? Uh so for this one, I mean it's a it's a long word, right? Ascharjanak. It's it's mean like amazing. So Wo, and this is a word you cannot like, uh, it cannot be contracted. So, wo ashchari janak hai. Wo ashchari janak hai. Wo ashchari janak hai. Well, because also what I'm noticing is you speak quickly because it's like wo ash, right? Or whatever. Um, ashchari, yeah. So, the, the wo is like that, right? Wo, yeah, wo is that, wo. yeah. That's okay. Vo. But th then when you speak quickly, I I pretty much like I almost don't even hear vo at all. Vo like, okay. like I vo. hear the v, but not the o, right? It's like va. Vo. 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 Yeah, it's see. Okay. Vo. Vo. Okay, so it's like, like vo. 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 <laughs> it's not wa. We don't have a wa in Hindi actually. It's yeah, I know. vo. It's always dental v, like uh, like a. Like V, I mean dental. What, what am I saying? It's V sound. So yeah. vo ascharya janak hai. Sorry. Do you not notice it? What? There's the the o part and then there's the a part. 
right? Like the start of the next word. No, I don't notice it. Yeah. Wo ascharjanak hai. Wo ascharjanak hai. Okay. I want you to say it I want you to say it fast. Voa. There you go. Yeah, voa. I'm saying voa and then voa. So there's like a pause in between. So voa and voa. Voa ascharjanak. Voa. Yeah. Vo. Voa and then voa. So that's like a linking. Exactly. But it it sounds to me uh and maybe it, it's just me well um yeah. that like the the o is still there like i'm not saying it's not there or it's or it's, yeah. it's necessarily changing like completely but it's that's why i asked you if hindi has reductions because it, it seems almost like like if you were to say it like voa you know voa whatever but mm-hmm. when you're speaking quickly it's like wa 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 is maybe that's just Bo, my perception yeah maybe yeah no no that's true so see if if i don't notice it then i i cannot tell you right but yeah. now that i slow down and hear myself wo ascharjanak hai wo wo and then wo ascharjanak hai okay number 9 now this is also i want statement. to go to the beach yeah <laughs> exactly right now if you say it that way it's going to sound a little too enunciated right i want to go to the beach right I want to go to the beach. I want to go to the beach. Very nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Um, so yeah, everybody watching, do it exactly like you. <laughs> Don't do it like me. Do it like him. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So I want to go to the beach. 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 Yeah. If you use the It's English not... word beach, how does it sound? I want to go to the beach. I want to go to the beach. Okay. So it's like my beach par jana chahta hu. We're not stressing my beach pe jana chahta hu. It's my beach pe jana chahta hu. Okay. Um so yeah. it's still kind of um it, it's hard even for me to hear the difference because I'm I'm like hearing the word beach and it's like standing out to me so it sounds maybe a little more stressed than it actually mm-hmm. is but yeah I can hear that that's kind of flattened out a bit. So that's another thing to be aware of uh you know sometimes the introduction of foreign words can act a little bit weird but the the same underlying structure of the language should remain intact. I don't want to go because it's scary. I don't want to go because it's scary. Main nahi jana chahta kyunki wo daravna hai. Main nahi jana chahta kyunki wo daravna hai. Main nahi jana chahta kyunki wo daravna hai. I'm hearing so what, what what's the because part because I know some languages put the because in front. Mhm. So, kyunki is because it's in the middle of the sentence. So, main nahi jana chahta kyunki wo daravna hai. Okay. So, because is in the middle, is it the same order as English like so the last part is it's scary? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um so, cause... I don't want to go is main nahi jana chahta. Uh-huh. Then because is kyunki it's scary. wo daravna hai okay now i have to ask that because um just so i know where things are because like for example in japanese um mm-hmm. it's actually like the most natural word order is to do like it's scary because and then the reason mm-hmm. so not like yeah so like but it we're not saying like it's scary because blah 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 it would be like it's scary because i don't want to go so it's it's actually i don't want to go because it's scary but in japanese it's backwards so. <laughs> Um, and oh, that can be really confusing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can also I mean in in uh now you cannot do it backwards, right? Mm-hmm. It's a scary and you cannot use because I don't want to go, right? But in Hindi you can probably do that. Wo daravna hai isliye main nahi jana chahta. But yeah, I'm using a different word there. So yeah. it's a scary that's why I don't want to go. So I would use wo daravna hai isliye main nahi jana chahta. So a different word for If you want to do it backwards, you can do that too in oh, English. Yeah. Listen to the basic rhythm because this can be important here. So, if we say it one way, if we say um, I don't want to go because it's scary, go ahead and, and say that in Hindi. I don't want to go because it's scary because it's scary. Okay. If we sort of switch the clause order in English, which we can do, and we say because it's scary, I don't want to go. Because it's scary, I don't want to go. Yeah. Because it's scary, I don't want to go. Yeah. Because it's scary, I don't want to go. Yeah. Because it's scary, I don't want to go. क्योंकि वो डरावना है इसलिए मैं नहीं जाना चाहता ओके सो आई एम नोटिसिंग अ बिट ऑफ अ चेंज इन सम ऑफ द इंटोनेशन um and the same thing is happening in english right because we're supposed to have a comma so yeah. instead of i don't want to go because it's scary it's just like flows where because it's scary yeah. i don't want to go क्योंकि वो डरावना है इसलिए मैं नहीं जाना चाहता 
So it sounds like you actually have a very similar type of intonation there between the two clauses. Yeah, there is. 